Hey, welcome to Hapto Scrum. It's been uh, almost five days now. We've been talking about these kind of mini series about to, how to be an effective Scrum Master. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. Learned a lot. I hope you picked up some good tips there. Um, but today is going to be one of those day, one of those sessions where um, you're really revving to go for an interview as a Scrum Master and. Uh, a little bit nervous, I guess, and uh, you want to make sure that you are successful uh, in getting that dream job of yours. And my job here is to tell you how to be an effective uh, candidate for Scrum Master. And I'm going to go through some of the questions here, which I feel are kind of fundamental, very important, always asked. Um, but there are more questions than that, obviously, because the interviews is almost like an hour or maybe longer. But today I want to share with you some of the key questions and what the answers um, you should be giving and I like I said in the last video I have been on the other side of the interview desk as well where I am interviewing a candidate for Scrum Master so as well as the answers to the question you need to be aware of your body language you know simple things like uh, looking in the eyes when you're talking uh, upright firm handshake all that is given uh, but let's look at the answer that you're going to give that will make the interviewer uh, impressed with your answers and say yep this is the kind of person we're looking for and by the way uh, a scrum master role is not all about theory it's about your depth of knowledge how well you're going to fit as a team remember as a manager you're always looking for that team fit uh, than the role itself because team fit is most important in any organization for any job uh, so you know your job but how do you fit as a team member so always remember that part so let's dive in and see what you would say to these questions that I put on the board for you. First question, they might ask you, hey, what are the, how do, we, how do you instill agile values into an organization or into a team uh, that may not be agile minded, that might not be, uh, they might be stuck in that waterfall kind of uh, thinking. So the answer would be, well, first of all, the organization must have made their mind up from the management level down to the actual scrum team that there is an appetite there is a reason for them to do agile and therefore they want to implement agile they will say we are agile workshop so you may hear that but when you go into the job you might find that the agile workshop agile mindset is not there so how do you as a scrum master would be a task to instill agile values well first of all you're going to say as a Scrum Master, I will need to explain why Agile is important compared to the other waterfall or the traditional approaches. The traditional approaches are not bad, but they've done their job. But today's world where you know time to market is important to be at the leading edge in terms of uh, uh, getting the product out there, you need to be Agile. You need to be able to make that change. So explaining the reason why Agile is important is the first thing as a Scrum Master. You need to know Agile is the way forward. You need to believe in that. So therefore you start having to instill in people's mind, hey, I heard as an Agile, you don't do documentation. Hey, I heard in Agile, um, you know, you just do things, there are no requirements. You need to debunk these kind of myths and say, no, Agile does create documentation agile is not just that there are requirements they're not requirements they call user stories so you need to feel comfortable confident that what you're saying what you believe in is that agile is the right way forward so how would you answer the question regarding why and how is important as an interviewer from you as opposed to say no you got to have agile because agile is good and that is okay but you need to add more value to that by having your experience behind to say why you think that's important. Yes, I agree there will be some challenges. People will not change their mind. So you need to make sure that you know how to confront people who don't want to change and you need to do that in a professional manner. So having to still Agile value is, is to know Agile, is to keep teaching people what Agile is and what the value of Agile is. And hopefully the management has already made that point, made that point. So the organization is ready with the appetite to make that agile environment. So you should be able to continue with that. That's the kind of answer I would I would give for the first one. Second question. You know, there are so many um, scrum ceremonies and um, the team might say, we don't want to attend all these ceremonies. We only have two weeks to do the work. I'm wasting my time. I'm not interested. How do you how do you deal with that? So as a scrum master, you can say, well, first of all, 
we need to understand why do we have scrum ceremonies and what are the reasons, what are the benefits of having these uh, ceremonies. So let's talk about two. Daily stand up, 15 minutes touch point. For whom? For Scrum Master to see how they're doing? It's not true. You don't give update to Scrum Master. It is for the team to have a touch point early in the morning to understand how they're doing in terms of progressing the sprint that they're taking on in terms of completing the work. It is a touch point for the team to understand. The Scrum Master has only kind of facilitated that. So having to understand why you need to do that daily stand up and why is 15 minutes because you shouldn't be there for too long if people start you know talking about long discussion you need to cut that off so and making sure the team understands why they need to attend is important so having them understood and be there on time because if it's only 15 minutes and they come in in like five ten minutes later they miss the point you need to make sure they come on time punctual punctuality is important the other one is retrospective hey scrum master um, you don't need to do the retrospective. We know what we're doing. We just need to do the next sprint. No, it is important. Retrospective is lessons learned. That means you need to make sure, tell the team, what did you do that you could do better next time? There's always room for improvement. So you as Scrum Master need to highlight to the team that having a continuous improvement is important. And therefore, what do you do over here is not just an exercise, but the reason you did that is to do an exercise, lessons learned, and you are going to implement those changes before the next sprint. So retrospective is important. So to answer this question, I want to take in care of two. You can give two examples in the interview, but you need to make sure that the reason why they're there and what's the function of that. And if people understand that, the team would follow that. So that's a kind of question for the number for number two. Number three, you're a, you're a scrum master, you're a servant leader. You don't have any power. How do you make people do what you want them to do? How do you manage people? So that's a very good question. So you can say, well, I am a servant leader. But if you remember, technology, process, people. You can always understand technology. You can always understand process. But you can never understand people. People management is the most difficult, complex um, area to master. So as a Scrum Master, as a servant leader, you have to work with people. You have to make sure that they understood. All these things we talked about all kind of fall into the servant leader. You need to make people not demand, but make them realize why they need to do that. Make them realize what is the overall objective? What is the vision of the organization that you as a Scrum team trying to build and what are the benefits? And uh, on the way, you as a Scrum Master, you need to celebrate those tiny noticeable things, those tiny milestones. So as a servant leader, you are always encouraging, you're always facilitating, you're always coaching, you're always mentoring, you realize that you are a servant leader, but you're doing a good job when you are trying to teach people on one-on-one, or you're teaching people as a group. You put a, some videos together so that they can watch. All this work that you do is helping the team to understand Agile, to understand why they're doing Scrum ceremonies, and understand that what you're trying to do is to build the end product that the team that the, that the company is trying to build. If you can get that through, then you have answered the question. So as an interviewer, you have already made clear that you not only know this, the basics or the textbook answers, you have shown your kind of experience behind that by saying, yes, I know what the ceremonies are, but I also want to know why they do that. Yes, I know what the Agile is, but I also tell them what the, that is the case. So hopefully this will give you a good kind of indication, but we'll, um, we'll touch base more into the uh, howtoscrum.com, which will go into more detail. Until then, see you next time. Hey, thank you so much, guys. We've done our five series, mini series for this How to Scrum. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. Um, and uh, just to give you a bit of background, where I did this shooting is in our homemade studio. Uh, it's uh, put together this year just to do this kind of work and I hope you are able to enjoy the quality of the video and, and the content itself. Uh, the reason we put this video together was to give some kind of background to 
how to scrum scrum itself because scrum agile is a big thing these days and i wanted to put together this kind of uh, a mini series to give you a teaser to give you some insight into from my experience things that are important and uh, i hope you found it in, in challenging and in interesting um, but the idea was to give you kind of a, a, a kind of a way of uh, getting yourself into this kind of uh, agile scrum master uh, career and therefore you become an effective scrum master so if you like this series um, then you should check out if you want more information you want to really get to the depth of how to be an effective scrum master check out the uh, howtoscrum.com i put a course there together called how to scrum to be an effective scrum master that course was put together based on my experience over 27 years working as a project manager as a technical project manager as a scrum master senior scrum master working with banks insurance companies telecom utilities all that i put together into this course so that you can learn the basics of scrum you can understand some tips and techniques and how to manage difficult situation conflict of interest people management and how to be an effective scrum master how to become a really like a role model that you almost act like a coach within an organization because you have a really good understanding of uh, scrum scrum framework um, so like i said uh, the scrum how to scrum so how to scrum.com has been put together as a website with myself and my son uh, because we realize that the basics of scrum is always on the internet but to understand more about scrum to understand what kind of tips and techniques some templates some kind of short videos that's the reason why i put it together so that people like you can go there and learn pick up some te te techniques and tips from myself and um, and i welcome your feedback to the course and uh, hopefully if there is a sufficient feedback i will answer the kind of questions and maybe make another version of that course to to address some of those concerns that you may have uh, listed so come back to um, hardscrum.com check out the course and uh, i wish you all the best in your career as a scrum master bye